Um, so I'm going to take you through how we've used the three levels of pol policy deployment to try and reduce length of stay. And we're going to be talking about something called Plan for Every Patient, which we'll describe as, as we go through. So perhaps a little bit about the Trust first. The trust is one of the largest acute trusts in the country. It's got a budget of about 400 million and 7,000 employees. Crucially, though, it's across four sites, each 40 miles apart in Lincolnshire. And we don't have motorways in Lincolnshire. We have country roads. So it takes an hour to drive between each hospital. So I've got a service improvement team that provides service improvement across those three sites. And it's a small team. So let's just take you back to 18 months, two years ago, and our new chief executive come in, and of course all chief executives like to have their own structure, so he was going through a management restructure of our organisation. So all the managers were feeling under threat. A lot of them that were in post weren't going to keep the same post, so there was a lot of inertia in the organisation. People not wanting to make decisions or do things because they weren't sure whether actually it was going to be their job anymore. The NHS has to make savings of 20 billion in the uh, five years. And our contribution towards that was 76 million over four years. And I was asked to set up a transformation programme that would contribute about 14 million um, each year towards that target. So, of course, this is stressful for me because I actually wasn't in a permanent post either. So I sat down with my uh, chief executive and finance director. And so, to start with, there was some really good news. Good news was that they wanted to, to use Lean to, um, to do the work. Fantastic. They essentially wanted to protect quality and safety of patient care because there had been another NHS trust in Mid Staffordshire that, um, and I'm just quoting you, where patients were routinely neglected by a trust that was preoccupied with cost-cutting targets and processes which lost sight of its fundamental responsibility to provide safe care. So there's a lot of pressure on the health service not just to cut costs, but to look at quality and safety. Great news. And then he went on to say, well, actually, I want delivery on all sites at the same time. I want you to transform all the organisation at the same time, and I want this to be in addition to every other priority we've ever had. Now, for those of you who know anything about improvement, the bottom three don't go with the top two. Now, I probably wasn't in a position to challenge back. Don't do that. Um, so the, the organisation wanted to set off in this direction. So then I had this kind of, how am I going to do this? What am I going to do? How do I get a coherent programme of transformation that is owned by the people in the organisation and that will deliver, despite all the things I've told you. So there were some things that I could do. Um, we could identify the priorities and we had some timeouts with our clinicians and our managers and other staff from our trust and from across our health community. And we were able to set some priorities for patients with emergency care needs and those with planned care needs like surgery. So that was good. And I could benchmark those either internally against a standard that we set, or I could benchmark those externally like length of stay and see the gap between where we were and where everybody else was. And um, as Dave said, I attended a a conference two years ago where Takashi had talked about this thing called a Bayer. And I've been working with Mark and Ian from the Lean Enterprise Academy, and they said, well, why not think about that? Oh, yeah, that would work. That might work. Yeah, absolutely. Let's have, let's, let's have a go at that. They also said, um, why not think about doing something called Hoshin? Hoshin? What's Hoshin? They said, do you remember that email we sent you several months ago? describing Hoshin and about how it might work in your organisation. No, I didn't remember that. So I dug it out and had a look and ended up with one of these. 
Now, you saw this earlier on in Laurie's talk, but she will explain about how we've used it. So now here on one sheet, I've actually got our priorities. I've got transformation priorities, which are, and I'll talk through some of this in a bit, it will be a bit clearer later, um, which include the standards we set with our clinicians. It's got our key priorities, including um, urgent care flow, which is length of stay, and other things. It's got the projects that we have decided to do. And you'll notice there aren't that many projects. There's eight or nine, ten of those. So those projects are the vital few that we want to implement to get our priorities implemented. It also describes our top level metrics, what we might actually see if we did those projects. And one of those is a reduction in length of stay. And it's got what that would deliver. So for our length of stay, if we deliver the reduction based on the projects that are at the top, we could deliver 50,000 bed days, which would equal a number of wards. We might then choose to take some of those wards out and make that saving. Does another, another few things. You can see the crosses. The crosses are the relationship between each of these sections. So I can clearly see, if I do a piece of work, how it aligns to the other pieces of work on the matrix. As Laurie was talking this morning, you can clearly see also that there are names in the frame. This is a trust level deployment matrix. And these are executive directors who are leading these pieces of work. You can also see who's doing the most work, whether that's evened out rightly. You can see the implementation plan. Now, this is not the delivery plan. This is the implementation of the plan. We set the plan out. How are we doing against the plan? Are we on plan or not on plan? Obviously, green's on plan and red's off plan. So on one piece of paper, I've now got everything I need. Crucially, it's not called hosting in our organisation. I did try that. Went along to our exec team, tell them I was going to do hosting. And they looked at me as though I'd gone mad. Comes back to Mike's point about actually we need to reframe the words we use. And we, I've learnt the hard lesson that we don't use Japanese. It doesn't really actually matter what you use. You can use whatever you want as long as the people you're using it with understand it and are happy to work it. If this deployment matrix goes that way, there's a problem. There's a problem because actually all you're going to be doing is having more projects because the project's at the top. So the longer it gets, the taller it gets, actually you're taking on more work than you can really do. If it goes that way, that's good because that means that your projects are few and your delivery is more. So let's have a look at one that's um, related to plan for every patient. Now, I know you don't, don't know what that is. It's a simple planning tool, visual planning tool, to help us to plan patients' flow through our wards. But you'll hear more about that a bit later. Now, you can see on this that we've got the areas highlighted that show me the flow from the urgent care priority, round plan for every patient, how that fits into the metrics, and how that fits into our deliverables. And this one's a little easier to see. So flow and urgent care means that I can get plan for every patient as a project which will link to that because that helps me to get flow and reduce length of stay. That would help me to deliver a 30% reduction in our medical length of stay. It would also benefit things like avoidable, unavoidable emergency readmissions. Um, it would also help me to hit my... A&E standard of 95%, as well as doing some work around discharge 
Um, and if I can free my beds up, then I'll be able to hit my theatre utilisation target. And then the deliverables, you can see that as well as bed days, it helps me to do a number of other things around specific things to uh, improve our organisation. So, I'm looking for a length of stay reduction in our organisation. I've now gone away and taken my clinical managerial priorities and got those embedded into my strategy deployment matrix. The execs like this, this you can see on one sheet of paper that this is good. So have I got my length of stay reduction? No. It's a piece of paper and it's sitting with the execs. So I need to translate that now into something which our teams can actually deliver. Now we don't actually use the deployment matrix to do that. And the reason we don't is because it's a piece of paper with lots of crosses on it. We go to a ward and give that to a nurse and say, there you go, there's your plan. They'd think you're mad. So let's try and convert that into a site improvement plan. So a site improvement plan has, in the uh, left-hand side, in the blue section, it's the detailed projects that we're going to do to, to meet the projects that were on our strategy deployment matrix. And you can see that the plan for every patient is one of those. I can see the steps and my rollout plan. I can also see who's going to facilitate that. There's a column there for facilitator, usually one of my team. But crucially, I can see who the operational owner is. I can also see who the senior owner is. And I can see how much, if I'm on plan or not. OK, so that's good. I've now got a strategy deployment matrix. I've now got a site team with their plan. So have I got my length of stay reduction? No. No, I need something else. I need something about how I'm going to performance manage this. And the learning, sorry, the learning that we had from, uh, which I've gone through already, is the um, deployment matrix is a really good tool. It needs to focus on the vital few. Um, it's great at executive level, but actually it needs translating to operational level into simple plans. It needs to be realistic. And um, we've heard already this morning about um, delivering those plans and getting people involved in those to work them up. So, my performance management. How am I going to get my teams? How am I going to know how I'm doing? So, an abayer. So we've talked about a Bayer earlier. Now in our organisation, and actually coming back to that, what is an Bayer? I didn't know what an Bayer was. It's a big project room. So we set aside a room on each of our sites, our three main sites, which is an ordinary meeting room, and we decided to have our project documents in that room. Now if we'd been one, org, one uh, trust, one hospital, that would have been really good, but we're three hospitals. So we decided to have three abayer, and we've got urgent care and plan care boards made up of our execs and other senior managers and some clinicians. And they go round from site to site through our abayer room, and they manage the projects through that room. People come to the room and actually then go through how they're doing against their projects. So, what happens in the rooms, and how does that work? Um, well, this is simple. This is our obeyer. This is our first wall of our obeyer. This is a meeting room that we've changed into an obeyer room. We've actually got the strategy deployment matrix on the wall. We've got the site plan to deliver it. And we've got our performance dashboard made up of a few metrics that come out of our deployment matrix. So we can see at a glance how we're doing. So, same room. 
we've now got the three sites up on the wall. At a glance, anybody using this room can actually do this. So the Abaya concept is very simple. But actually, in terms of how we set it up, my first, my first um, action was I thought, well, I'll have a go at this. So I selected a room on one of our sites. I pulled all the furniture out of the room, because in the bay you don't have any furniture. I then set it up for the board to come to the room. I unfortunately forgot to ask the board's permission to take all the furniture out of the room and to do things differently. So on the day, the exec turned up with all the board members. And just before she went in the room, I said, do you mind if we try something different? OK, she said, what's that? Opened the door, and there was no furniture. Luckily, the meeting went well. And through using that Abaya process, we were able to reduce the time the meeting took from two and a half hours to an hour. That was pretty good. But of course, not everybody likes standing for an hour. <laughs> and these are actually the shoes of one of our senior managers. Now, Abaya principles trying to get behaviours changed. So you focus. You stand up for a reason. You stand up because people don't like standing. Actually, the behaviour we got was that manager wore flat shoes after that. So what's, what's an obey all about anyway? And we started to really think this through, because it's difficult for us. We've got three sites. So we were trying to pull managers to those three sites, pull them away from work and come to the obey room and have that conversation. It wasn't a great use of our travelling time. It wasn't a great use of our manager's time. We all know meetings. We all know how meetings work. If you think about through how our, actually our meetings work currently, we know that they take too much time. There's too little output. You know if somebody sets a meeting up at work, there's usually 10 to 15 people that go along for the first few meetings, and that's great. There's no output, but it's, you know, it's good conversation. And then over time, there's less and less people that attend. And at work, there's a big debate going on about, actually, some of the meetings, the senior meetings, were ineffective. They couldn't get through the agenda. There was too much to do. So the answer, surely, they came up with was to have a longer meeting, take it into the evening. Of course, it's the opposite of what they should be doing. So the Nabea is about practising the efficient and effective transfer of vital information. It's about making commitments and keeping them, taking action. So it's about relentlessly, relentlessly searching for countermeasures. If you're milestones, if you're off plan, what are you going to do to get back on plan? Saying you're off plan is just not good enough. And crucially, it's about taking responsibility for those projects and actions to achieve them taking personal responsibility. So thinking that through, we um, then started to think through, well, how do we, what do we do next? Um, and we decided that actually we didn't need to stand up. We now sit down and have our meetings. And we now use video conferencing technology so that we can have managers on each site talking together. But actually, we have taken it forward. And Mike's point this, this morning about you've got to think it through for yourselves about how it is for you, we've come up with two things that we actually think is right. And we think that meetings, you have to think through what, what is a meeting, why have it? So if meetings were inf for information, you'd invite everyone. And if you weren't there, you'd miss out. But I don't think that's what meetings are for. I think meetings are for, for decisions. And therefore, you don't need many people in the room. You need the core people who can take the decision, and you need other people to come and report. So there are two things that we think are really important. The first thing is what we heard this morning, is PDCA. And we heard this morning that it's actually check first. So it's cap do. And I'll talk you through that in a second. And the second thing we think is really important is 
the issues are raised and are decision ready. How many times have you gone to a meeting and someone's gone on and on and on and actually not really come to the point because they're not prepared? So what we require our teams now to do is they come into the board meetings and they have to use CAPDO. They have to do a three-minute report and no longer and they're timed and they have to have decision ready. So the key is um, prepare. So let's have a look at um, CAPDO. Now this is really simple, except it's so simple it's really hard. And quite often you talk to people about coming to do this and they'll say, yeah, 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 no problem. And they don't do it properly. So we spend a lot of time coaching our middle managers about what CAPDO is, about PDCA, but actually about how to do this, how to do a three-minute report. So let's have a look. We're thinking about something called plan for every patient. We're thinking about, actually, let's pretend we've got to have it implemented by September. So the first thing is plan versus actual. My target is to have plan for every patient implemented by September. I am two weeks behind. I faced a number of issues in that two weeks. This is a summary of those issues. I need help or I don't need help. Because of the learning I've undertaken by doing the work, I want to share some of that so you can understand it and learn from it. But actually, because of that, I'm going to change the way I've done it. I'm going to use my PDCA and I'm going to do things slightly differently. And next week, I will do. Key thing in there is about understanding that you've got a target. You should know that if you're on plan or off plan and would be able to report it. So what about problems and issues? This is where we get a clarity. What is the problem? And we call this card issues. Um, and card stands for clear, concise, constructive, analysis if required, decision ready recommendation. And it has to fit onto a post it note. One of these things. So you come. And if you can't fit your problem and your recommendation and your analysis onto this post-it note, you haven't thought about it enough. So go away and do it again. So here we go. I won't go through that because it will come up later with one of the other's talks. So we don't have um, minutes we have actions. So how do we get our actions? OK, so we've got some problems here on a post-it note. We have an issues board. Now, a lot of this, we started to move towards electronic because we're using video conferencing. We have an issues board where people can raise their issues. So the first thing is that there are potential issues which will throw their piece of work off course. And they may want to come to the board and say, I've got a potential issue. The key person who has helped me to implement is actually now gone off sick for six months. And therefore, it may delay my project. They'll come with real issues, and they'll come up with those, as I've described, with a card issue. And the board will talk through that. It's decision ready, so it shouldn't take too long. It should be a... Yep, you like, we like your recommendation, do that. Or actually, we'll ask you a few questions before we make a decision. And then they come up with a smart action. We've heard about smart earlier. There'll be some that over time get finished, so we keep those on our issues board. We can see they're resolved. And then we actually might be able to start theming those together. Hang on a minute, this, this is interesting, because this issue about... Ownership, no ownership on the site from the doctors keeps coming up. So we need to start thinking that through a bit more. And actually, rather than taking a one off action, we may actually need to do a fishbone to understand it a bit better. Or we might start an A3, 
Let's get to the root cause and stop it happening again. So, now we've got our strategy deployment matrix. It's great. We've got our site plan. We've got an abeyer system. And we've got, key to that, preparing, cap do, card issues, and our issues action board. So our learning from that is, it's actually not about the room. It's not about standing up. It's about preparation. It's about rigour and focus. It's about smart actions. It's about preparing before you come into the room to do that. Our feedback from our teams is it's much more focused. They actually like it. Um, and they have started to learn that rigour of don't come into the room unless you're prepared because you will be asked lots of difficult questions.